move to the future of 5G. President Trump holding an event at the White House today with Federal Communications Commission Chairman Ajit Pai to highlight U.S. leadership in 5G wireless networks, as well as efforts to provide high-speed Internet access to rural areas that lack broadband connection. This follows repeated calls by the president for faster 5G networks. Joining me right now in a Fox Business exclusive is the Federal Communications Commission Chairman Ajit Pai. Mr. Chairman, it's good to have you on the program this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Hey, good morning, and thanks for having me on. So let me kick it off with 5G. What are your expectations as this uh, faster technology is, comes into play within the next, uh, I don't know, when do you see it, a couple of years or next year? I think it's coming online soon. We already see some American carriers doing trials across the United States, and that's in part because we want America to be the leader in 5G, and that's part of the reason why the president and I are doing this event, to highlight the early success that America has had and to forecast some of the steps we are going to take to continue the momentum. We want America to continue to be the leader in this next generation of wireless connectivity. I tell you, you've got a big job because things are changing fast, Mr. Chairman. You know that. We're reporting every day about how YouTube and Hulu and Netflix and all these relatively new players are on the scene right now and it's got to be creating something of a dilemma for you and your colleagues in terms of the regulatory environment. Mark Zuckerberg says Facebook should be regulated. Uh, what does a perfect world look like in your view? Do you want to see regulation of things like Facebook and Google, YouTube? Well, that's a question that Congress is wrestling with. From our perspective, at least, we want to put the building blocks in place so we can have the fastest possible network so that all of these applications can operate at scale. We think that America is the best home for this kind of innovation and investment. And if we get it right, especially when it comes to a transformative technology like 5G, we're confident we'll see even more competition and more innovation. And ultimately, that's a question that others will have to think about in terms of the appropriate regulatory framework. But there's no question there have been some serious uh, issues raised about privacy and the like uh, that Congress is wrestling with when well, it comes to regulation of Silicon Valley. It's also expensive, right, Mr. Chairman? I mean, second story in the journal this morning, online TV bundles are getting bigger and more expensive, muddling the economic equation that has led millions to cut the cord. YouTube just raised its price to $50. That's a, that's a significant number. Everybody's cable bill is getting bigger as well. What's your reaction? In some ways, it's a very uh, complicated marketplace. On one hand, consumers have more choice than ever before. They can watch content when they want on whatever device they want. On the other hand, a lot of businesses are struggling with the appropriate business model. We are long past the days when you had three broadcast channels and a wired telephone, and that was pretty much your only outlet to the outside world. And so I think that's part of what businesses are struggling with is in an era of scarce capital, fiercer competition than ever before, how do we make these business models work? And ultimately, that's a question that the market is going to be sorting out. Uh, well, let me ask you about digital privacy, though. Chinese technology giant Huawei reportedly looking to partner exclusively with Apple, one of, the big, one of its biggest rivals to bring the 5G chips to the U.S. There's no indication that Apple is interested. Potential ban on U.S. Uh, on, uh, US ban on Huawei technology, of course, could pose some obstacles here. And this comes amid comments earlier this morning from a Huawei spokesperson who hit back at the U.S. for rallying allies against the Chinese company. What's your reaction? to Huawei. Should the U.S. be partnering with Huawei, a Chinese telecom company? At the FCC and across the United States government, we want to make sure that our networks, especially our next generation 5G networks, are secure and reliable. And so we do have concerns about any company, any entity, that may have to comply with requests from the intelligence services of a foreign country. And that is essentially what is the, one of the concerns that has been raised here. That's why at the FCC, I've proposed banning the use of federal funding extended by the FCC from being used on equipment or services that come from companies that have been determined to present a national security threat, especially as we emerge into this 5G environment where some of these networks could be managed from abroad even using some of these uh, software tools. We want to make sure that our networks are secure. That is the base level expectation I think that any government should have. Well, I mean, look at Huawei and all of the, 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 the settlements that they've had. How many companies in America have sued this company for stealing trade secrets? Cisco sued them for stealing the routers, uh, trade secrets, uh, Motorola Solutions, T-Mobile, Microsoft where 90% of the people in China are using the Microsoft operating system and only 1% pay for it. What is the U.S. supposed to do about that? 
I think from our perspective, we have to think very seriously about what types of equipment and services we include in our networks here. We're also working with some of our counterparts around the world to emphasize to them how important it is to think about the security of these networks. The United Kingdom, for example, recently put out a cybersecurity report about that company that I would certainly commend to, to people's attention. Yeah. Ultimately, these networks are very critical for national competitiveness and national security. We need to make sure that they are as reliable as possible. Mr. Chairman, let me ask you this. Um, more and more people are getting their news from things like Twitter, uh, Google, Apple News. Do you, do you see these companies as media companies? That's a great question. I think increasingly they are gathering and distributing content in a way that would be very akin to media companies. Uh, there's been a traditional debate here in Washington about, from a regulatory perspective, does that make them a media company and should they be regulated as such? Right. I think part of the issue is that a lot of these companies have been exercising essentially editorial control over their platforms. And to the extent that these companies have not been transparent, I, for example, have talked two years ago about the fact that Twitter and other Silicon Valley companies aren't transparent about how they do business, we need to have more insight in yeah. order to understand exactly what kind of company they are. So you're looking at that? That's one of the issues that yeah. I think Congress is looking at, the FCC has talked about, and uh, there's a current, there's a really important conversation to be had across the aisle yeah. and across government. Uh, real quick, Mr. Chairman, I've got to ask you about robocalls. They are oh, getting worse. I just got like five of them yesterday, three of which came on my cell phone. The FCC slapping fines on these robocalls, uh, robocallers totaling $208 million since uh, 2015, but it's collected less than $7,000 of that amount so far, according to the journal. Is the problem only getting worse? Are you not getting the money when you're, when you're actually uh, targeting these guys? How do you stop it? Two different parts of our plan. First is taking aggressive regulatory action. We have told the industry that we expect them to adopt what is called call authentication, essentially a digital fingerprint for every phone call this year. And if they don't, the FCC will take action to make sure that they do. Secondly, in terms of enforcement, we have imposed all those fines, as you pointed out. We've referred those cases to the Department of Justice, which is in charge of collecting those fines. We've emphasized to the Justice Department, this is one of our top consumer protection priorities. We need you to make this an issue, to send a signal to all of the robocallers out there, even the ones who are beyond our shores, this is not going to stand for American consumers. Yeah, this is a big deal. Uh, we appreciate you joining us this morning. We'll be watching your event with the president later today. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thanks so much. Ajit Pai joining us there in Washington.